Vandiyathevan said, Take the knife from the sheath. As soon as he said that, the prince said, I have taken it. He took out the paddock knife. At the same time Vandiyathevan also took out the knife from the sheath. They are giant giant blades. Those who came near the Bodhi tree of Anuradhapura with horses also gave away the knives and left. The prince jumped down from his horse and said, Come down. I can't stand your too much preaching. I've got to take a look here and go. After saying that sternly, Vandiyathevan was stunned. He didn't know if it was a game or a reaction. However, as the prince had dismounted from his horse and landed on the ground, he too had to dismount. What sir? Why do you hesitate? Didn't you see me humiliated last night? Didn't you say that my patrons came and waited in the palace yard of your patron's house? Didn't you say that they were shocked to see the poets knocking away their umbrellas and clothes? I couldn't bear to think of it. Gotta leave. Saying that, the prince approached Vandiyadeva, holding the hilt of his sword with both hands and twirling it. Yes, did we mention it was a normal knife? A great thing is to hold it up with one hand, no matter how strong it is. It is only by holding it with both hands that one can swing the blade and attack the enemy. When the prince swung his knife like that with both hands, he did not look like a mild-mannered prince brought up in the comforts of the palace. He appeared like Bhima, Arkuna, and Abhimanyu, the ancient warriors. Still in Thirumani, 96 Punsumantha Vijayalaya Chola and Rajadatha Deva, who rode on an elephant, appeared in a majestic appearance to remind them that he was the one who came in their way. Vandiyathevan also held the knife with both hands and started spinning it. In the beginning, he was confused and hesitant. By and by, the mind was hardened. Heroism is high. He forgot that the enemy was a prince worthy of his admiration. The thought of why this fight disappeared. A blade spinning in the enemy's hand stood before his eyes. All his attention was focused on one thing, how to escape without being hit by the knife, how to knock it away and injure the enemy. The speed with which the blades rotate and the speed with which they collide with each other making the sound of Dana, Dana, first started in the Savka period, passed through the Middle Ages and came to the Rapid period. Alvar Kadayan did not understand the prince's business at first. Still, he felt there must be some purpose in it. It may be a ploy to stop those who come, and to know where they are and determine what we should do accordingly. So all were Kadayan, leaving the horses of the two warriors standing across the middle of the road, held their bridles and waited. Horsemen approaching from the opposite direction on the road. When he saw the tiger flag flying among them, all were Kadian's anxiety was relieved. Those who come are ours, but who will they be? The builders who came ahead of them announced the matter with drums. In the Battle of Elam, the commander of the Sri Lankan forces outside Mahinda, in the Battle of Vegayatu, the great Velarbuthivikrama Kesari Maharaja of Kajumbalur, with the heroic Pandian head, is visited. Parag. A thunderous voice rang out. The appearance of the Pallava clan, the heroic Pandian-headed warrior in the Battle of Vegai, the mighty Bhupati who defeated the Venji army in the Battle of Vedapena, Parthibendra Varma visits. Parag rang out another thundering voice. About thirty horsemen came behind those who made this pledge. Among them, Senathapati Pariya Velar and Parthipendra sat on majestic white patrons as the central hero. The horsemen were followed by a huge elephant with Amberi. A little further behind the infantry was seen in the blur of a cloud of dust. The horsemen in front seemed displeased at the obstruction in the way. Who's that? Get out, give way. Some voices also heard that. Then the gathering's secret chatter of woa woa woa. There were exclamations of aha. Soldiers jumped from their horses. They stood around the people who had a knife fight. Bhutavikrama Kesari and Parthipendra also descended from the horse. They came and stood in front of the soldiers. Parthipendra was shocked. Vikram said to Kesari, See? What I said about Valadha is true or not? He is a preacher. He has started showing his hand to the prince himself. Are we just going to watch this? He raised the knife in his hand. 
Buddhavikramakesari stopped him by holding his hand. He said, Wait a minute, let's see. What a wonderful Kathy Poor. It's been a long time since I've seen something like this. The foot soldiers who came a little behind, about 300 in number, also arrived. They stood in a circle and had fun. Meanwhile, a woman came down from Ambari on top of the elephant. Between the horses and the soldiers she entered and stood at the head of the amused circle. The agitation on her face at that time could not be described as such. As the blades flew around, so did her eyeballs. Unbeknownst to her, her midriff swayed this way and that as the combatants jumped this way and that. After a while she picked up the nylet pala flower with a comb which she had inserted in her hair. She started twirling it this way and that. The flower stem in her hand twirled to the beat of the blades. We don't have to tell readers who this woman is. Yes, couldn't they have forgotten the flower pot? For a while those warriors stood and fought so that the prince's face was visible in front of her face. They moved little by little and came around half a diameter. At last Vandiyadeva's face came against Fung Uzali's face. At intervals, Vandiyadeva's eyes were observing the crowd of warriors that were growing around. Then they saw the flower pot too. He was distracted for a moment by the surprise of suddenly seeing the woman. That one moment was enough for the prince. The prince's blade hit Vandiyadeva's blade like Devendra's Vajrayuta. The monkey warrior stumbled. The blade slipped from his grip and fell. At last Vandiyadeva's face came against Fung Uzali's face. At intervals, Vandiyadeva's eyes were observing the crowd of warriors that were growing around. Then they saw the flower pot too. He was distracted for a moment by the surprise of suddenly seeing the woman. That one moment was enough for the prince. The prince's blade hit Vandiyadeva's blade like Devendra's Vajrayuta. The monkey warrior stumbled. The blade slipped from his grip and fell. At last Vandiyadeva's face came against Fung Uzali's face. At intervals, Vandiyadeva's eyes were observing the crowd of warriors that were growing around. Then they saw the flower pot too. He was distracted for a moment by the surprise of suddenly seeing the woman. That one moment was enough for the prince. The prince's blade hit Vandiyadeva's blade like Devendra's Vajrayuta. The monkey warrior stumbled. The blade slipped from his grip and fell. The prince's blade hit Vandiyadeva's blade like Devendra's Vajrayuta. The monkey warrior stumbled. The blade slipped from his grip and fell. The prince's blade hit Vandiyadeva's blade like Devendra's Vajrayuta. The monkey warrior stumbled. The blade slipped from his grip and fell. The cheers raised by the crowd at that time resembled the sound of the ocean. A young woman's excited laughter was heard despite all the clamor. Vandiyathevan tried to pick up the fallen knife again. Meanwhile the prince rushed to embrace him. You did not lose to my sword. You fought with sword to sword. But you lost to the sword of a woman's eye. There is no shame in this. There is time for all. Said. Vandiyathevan started to give some peace to it. By then Sinapati Buddhavikramakesari and Parthapendra had come close to them. Prince. It was I who sent this child to them. Has he done something wrong? We were in a panic for a while. Said. Yes, Commander. I can't stand his demands. They said there is a war going on in Sri Lanka, where is the war? Where is the war? He asked and pierced me. This is war. I showed that. When the prince said this, everyone around them cheered again. Senate Hapati came near Vandiyathava and patted him on the back. Father. It's been a long time since I've seen a knife fight like this. You're the perfect companion for a prince. Sometimes he's suddenly taken aback. Isn't he born in the dynasty of Parantaka Emperor, known as Kunjaramalan? Those who can't fight face to face with him can't be friends with him for long. Said. Meanwhile, Prince Parthapendra Pallavar went near and said, Sir. I have heard that you have come in search of me. I hasten to meet you. How is Tamayanar at Kanchi? How is my father? He asked. 
Tamayanar and Patanar have sent them a very important message. It has been four days since they came to Sri Lanka to find themselves. There is no more delay for a moment. Before Parthapendran said. If it is not an important matter, will you leave yourselves? There is no need to delay another moment. The news must be conveyed at once. Said. Meanwhile, their recently arrived commander Pariya Velar said, It is impossible to talk in the middle of so many people in the middle of the road. There is a shabby hall. Let's go there. Fortunately, there is no shortage of shabby halls in Sri Lanka. Said. From a short distance beyond the road, they all went towards the Parva Mandapam.